Hello everyone, welcome to Downtown Tailoring. In today's video, we are gonna make an alteration that at first glance seems to be so easy and straightforward, but it's not. You know, I've been working on alteration for many years and I've been working with so many good tailors. And I can tell you that even the most expert tailors sometimes have a hard time shortening short so let's go this case is the easy one you have a short that the legs are very straight and you just need to shorten for example in that case my customer wants to shorten to seven inches in seam and this goes exactly to the old seam so the job here is pretty straightforward you just have to open your hem you have to be careful not breaking and then you pretty much will fold where the other stitch was and of course cutting a little bit of the excess of material so you won't have a too thick hem is very good the only detail that it has is that now the hem will be a little bit bit smaller than where it was to be so but you can do something that i will explain you later so pretty much this is not what i'm talking about this is very easy when you finish you iron it and then you will have the perfect hem very beautiful no problem the situation get a little bit more complicated when you have a pants that is already long and somebody will tell you oh please can you shorten i want to make a short of this pant for for example, in this case, my customer wants to hem to eight inches in seam. Let me explain you what is the problem. So I have here two normal regular pattern of pants. And what happens in real life is that when you are making the patterns, you just need to make the pants short, right? And when you are custom making them or you know industrialized or whatever is very easy but let me show you when you want to shorten the pants what is going on i cut the patterns and you saw that i did it very straight and now i'm just sewing it like i'm making la regular and look what happened right away you see that it's not a straight and that becomes so confusing when you are trying then to join the two U together to form the pants, then you have too much material inside where the crotch is. And when you have the pants done, to deal with all of it is really, really tricky and complicated. Anyways, this is where the first problem starts because when you want to make a short you modify the pattern you are going to make sure that the line that comes up from the leg comes at 90 degree angle which will make the finished pants nicer so i mark the inseam of the pants and as you can see we have a leg that comes in an inverted trapezoidal way so we know that that will affect our result even more than I showed you before. Let me tell you a trick that you can do to mark them well and to have less problem. You are going to put your pants as flat as you can on your table and you are going to make sure that the side lines are all together in the same line. So what I did is to measure the distance from the hem to the length of my hem and it was around 23 inches and one quarter and then I marked this measurement in several points all around the pants. I will join those points but while I'm doing that I'm confirming that the line I'm making is perpendicular to the center line of the pants. When I finish at the front part then i'm gonna stretch out the back and i'm gonna make exactly the same again perpendicular to the crease and as you can see i don't have like a straight line coming from the back to the front that's a mistake that very often we want to make when i finish then i confirm that my line at the front is straight and then i proceed to cut one inch double folded hem is a good hem so i cut a two inches to make it an inch i see that in one of the leg the pants kind of doesn't look really 
good. And now I'm confirming again from the front that my line is perpendicular to the crease at the front and I'll be okay. Now I have the second problem that I had it at the other that the measurement when I fold it won't be enough and my pants won't look really good. I'm going to show you two ways to fix that problem. The first way is to mark when you are going to fold the hem and then you fold it like that like if you were an accordion and then you mark it again mark it inside and you can see how the lines goes out and then the lines goes in a little bit and if you sew over that again you won't have any problem with your pants you do that at both sides and you can sew so first, you know, sew the sides and now I can open the first stitch like the original stitch. Now I'm marking where I'm going to fold my hem. I used to mark like a little bit more than one inch, like a one sixteen. So when I'm sewing my hem, I can really, really sew at one inch in a very comfortable way. We don't need to fight with that hem, right? As I said before, I open and now I'm going to fold it and I'm going to pin it. And I'm going to make sure that I'm pinning the line with the line and then at the center, the crease with the crease. Because what happens is that sometimes when you are doing those hems a little bit wider, the material underneath tend to move too much and you don't want to have any problem. The pins really help. And then you just go and sew all around, making sure that you are not pulling the material at the top and everything is nice and flat. Look at that. It's not iron and it's looking really good. And the sides match perfectly well. But as I said before, there is another way that might be more difficult for some and easier for others. And it's just to open the sides and do not sew anything and you are going to pin in the same way, making sure that you are leaving the space for the opening. This space form itself when you just fold your hem following the lines. You don't have to calculate anything. You have it there and you are going to sew your hem. And please, please, member of the sewing police, don't come after me because I'm here in this channel to do all the alternatives that are good for my viewers. Sometimes it makes me feel like a lot of people don't respect our job. Nobody will ask in a car dealer, why did you give that person this car so ugly and so bad? So in sewing is the same. Look at that, both legs look wonderful. This is a great hem. This is with the first option and this one is with the second option with the seam open and as you can see outside looks exactly the same one very often the customer will bring you a pair of pants that they cut in a really bad way so in that case you are going again to accommodate your pants making sure that the waistband in both sides are all taut and good and you are going to repeat going perpendicular from the crease at the front and at the back and then you are going to put it flat and you are going to make sure that the line you made is completely straight. If you don't want to do the two steps, you can just do it flat and make a line and try to make sure that this line is perpendicular to the front crease. But sometimes we make that line inclined to one side or the other. And this is my last option. These are my own pants and they came like that. But let's say that I'm a customer and I say, oh, this length is good, but I don't want to have it folded. I prefer just a cuff that it will stay there. So what you will say, oh, this length is good. So we just need to shorten. But the customer will tell you, oh, but I want the cuff. But what happened? When you saw the cuff, you need to have your pan straight up. So in that case, you cannot make the cuff without tapering the pants. You can taper and then you can do it. But if the customer tell you, oh no, then there is a nice alternative. I'm gonna just open my hem because I will need that material. And then 
I'm going to open as well the inseam. In some cases, you will have to open the inseam and the outseam, but the outseam feels very straight. That's why I think I don't need to open. You are going to put everything flat and nice, and then you are going to mark the length, and then you are going to leave one inch and three quarter for seam allowance and cut it. After that, I'm going to mark one inch and one quarter, which is the standard width of a cuff. And I'm going to my sewing machine. I'm going to fold my hand on the line I just made. And I'm going to fold it again. And I'm going to pin that. I'm going to make sure that the side is going very straight. And I'm going to sew. And instead of sewing at the bottom as the way we will do it, we are going to sew just at one quarter inch. Then I'm going to my ironing board and I'm going to iron first what I did and then I pull down that hem to form a false cuff. In that case, you don't need really to have too much of the width or changing that because all what you needed of the material, it will go inside like you won't see that you are needing. And still you will lose around one quarter inch of the width, but that's pretty much negligible. Then I'm going to close my side and then search, do a top stitch to stay. And here you go. That's my false cuff. This is a great way to do a cuff that won't fall down and won't take too much material, neither from the wide or the length. And guys, that was all for today. I hope that I was clear enough. I myself, I've struggled before. And let me know in the comment if you have struggled as well. If you find this video useful, please give us a like. And don't forget to subscribe, share, comment. Bye.